Hello, welcome to Traditional Chinese Medicine. Today we're going to talk about tremors and Parkinson's. I will be your hostess today. My name is Christina Kapothanasis. I am a licensed acupuncturist here in the state of Hawaii and I am board certified nationally under the National Certification Commission for Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. I am also the executive director of the Hawaii Oriental Medicine and Acupuncture Association. Today we're going to take a look at tremors and Parkinson's. Parkinson's disease affects approximately 1% of people age 55 or older and is more prevalent in men than women. Some of the symptoms of Parkinson's disease are tremors and some people have tremors and aren't yet diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. That's why we're focusing on the symptom more than the complete disease today. Tremors can be the resting tremors. These patients can also have symptoms of slowness. They may have difficulty fulfilling their daily activities. Writing may be difficult, dressing, cooking, doing their household chores. Their gait may be slow, walking may be more like shuffling, and they may have some kind of muscular rigidity or tightness in the muscles. Some patients can also have trouble speaking. Their speech may be slightly slurred. They may have trouble swallowing and they may have some trouble with memory. Usually the tremors are in either the head or the limbs, either the arms or the feet. But the tremors can also be present in the lips and tongue as well. In Chinese medicine, we say that tremors are associated with the liver. Now this is not exactly liver in terms of liver function with Western medicine's uh, testing. Liver in Chinese medicine controls the tendons, ligaments, and tendons such as this that control the muscle movements. In the classical text, Huang Di Mei Jing, it says, Zhu Feng Diao Xuan Jie Shu Gan. This means that this contains the meaning that all kinds of tremors and symptoms of this nature are controlled by the liver. In Chinese medicine, uh, if we summarize all of the pathological causes, reasons for tremors, we can see that the liver is one. We can also see that it involves the spleen, which is the root of the digestive system in Chinese medicine. It can also involve the heart and the kidneys. The external pathogens that are involved are wind, fire, phlegm, and deficiency. So we usually see the liver involved first with either a deficient kind of heat or an excess kind of heat. This heat can give rise to wind, which is the cause of the tremors. And it can also affect the spleen to make spleen deficiency, heart deficiency, and kidney deficiency. Over time, any of these different deficiencies can have uh, the idea of phlegm, or stagnation added on. And what we're going to talk about today is what these different terms mean in terms of patients and their symptoms. It may seem a little bit foreign, these vocabulary, in terms of medicine, but hopefully I'm going to demystify it for you today. What we do in Chinese medicine is something called bian zhen lun zhi. We separate tremors into different categories. Each category will be paired with a different treatment method. The first type of tremor or Parkinson's disease is the liver, kidney, essence, and blood deficiency. We say that the function of the liver is to contain the blood and the function of the kidneys, one of the functions of the kidneys is to contain the essence. When these two are depleted, they can give rise to some of the symptoms that we've talked about so far today like tremors in the limbs or head. These patients may also see difficulty urinating and possibly have constipation. The idea of not having enough fluid in the body 
the blood being deficient, the essence of the kidneys being deficient, would cause dry symptoms like the difficulty urinating or the constipation. If there is a deficiency of blood and essence, we call these yin qualities, yin yang symbol, which you all have probably seen on the local surf shop store board. Uh, yin is actually, yin and yang are actually ancient Chinese sets of qualities. Yin representing cooling, nighttime, calm qualities, and yang representing daytime, heat, and active qualities. So if we have a deficiency of the nourishing, moisturizing fluid properties of the, of the yin, of the moisturizing, then we can see heat in the body, something similar to the idea of dehydration. If there is not enough yin and blood to rise and nourish the brain, these patients may see dizziness or blurry vision. If there's not enough blood to nourish the heart, the heart controls the mind and the spirit which controls sleep. These patients may have uh, forgetfulness and be able to not sleep at night and may be tired during the day. These patients may have a thin tongue, a very small tongue, because there's not enough uh, moisture to plump it up and it may be slightly red. A normal tongue is pink. The more red we see the more heat in the body. Their pulse may be fast. The faster it is the more heat in the body. It may be tight from the liver, the problems with the liver, and um, it may be thin if there's not enough fluid in the body. On the other hand, if we see an excess of heat in the liver, these patients sometimes have high blood pressure, uh, easily irritated or have, uh, have an anger issue. And they may also deplete this idea of essence or uh, fluid and moisturizing qualities in the kidneys. This cannot come up and control the liver yang, the liver heat, and the liver heat will rise in an excess fashion. This can also lead to tremors because the heat, whether it's of a deficiency nature or an excess nature, will always produce the wind quality that is responsible for shaking. These patients may have um, cramping and they may have some tingling or numbness in the fingertips or the toes. The liver yang rises just as heat rises in our everyday world. The yang, the liver yang also rises and it can disturb the, the qualities of the head, mainly the ears. So we may be able to see, maybe patients may be able to hear a ringing in the ears or tinnitus and they may also have signs of dizziness. Patients with liver yang excess may also have trouble sleeping but it may be disturbed by several dreams. Their tongue and pulse are going to be different from the deficiency yin liver type. The yin deficiency tongue is different in that it is a smaller than regular tongue where the yang tongue is larger. We can also tell the difference whereas they both, both may be red from the heat, the yin deficiency tongue will have a very thin coating or no coating at all and the excess may have a thin to thick coating of yellow and or white. That's one way to tell the difference between deficiency and excess. We can also tell by the pulse, whereas the yin deficiency pulse may be fast from the heat, it's thinner because it is not plumped with the moisture. The yang excess pulse may be quite strong, pounding, as well as fast for the heat, and tight for the liver or shaking. It may have a quality of slipperiness if there is dampness, which we will talk about the idea of dampness in just a second. So, so far we focused on the heat side of it pertaining to the liver. We also may see a deficiency of heat, so may have cold signs in the body, not enough heat to warm the organs. If we have a kidney yang deficiency, not enough heat in the kidneys. The kidneys may not properly warm the spleen. The spleen in Chinese medicine is the root of the digestive system. If the spleen is not strong enough to transform the food that we put in to digest the food and to eliminate it 
quickly. Then it may settle in the stomach and create a sticky condition we call dampness. Over time, this dampness will become more condensed and we call it phlegm. Now everybody thinks of phlegm as something that we cough up in the morning when we wake up. Many people have this, even though it's not normal. But this phlegm is only a phlegm of the lungs. The phlegm can be in, the idea of phlegm can be in the digestive system. It can also be in the meridians. Meridians are the channels which energy flows through the body and it can go into the tissues of the, the joints and ligaments and the muscles causing the tremors. So this is another cause of the tremors and the shaking is yang deficiency. The yang deficient people may feel at the beginning a bit cold. They may have a low appetite and they may have loose stools. Loose stools meaning they fall apart. They're not formed like a banana. Uh, over time, these people may lose weight and feel fatigued. If the dampness accrues and gets, it gets um, more accumulated more and creates heat, then we have an another, another type of the tremors. This is the phlegm heat creating wind. Over time, when the phlegm is in the body, it will become closer and closer and condensed and condensed until it creates fire. When it creates fire, just as the yang heat, it will also create wind and tremors. The, the stereotypical phlegm tongue coating is quite thick. So if you stick out your tongue and look at the coating on top, you can see if it's very thin. If it's thin, you can see through to the body of the tongue. And if it's thick enough that you can't see through to the body of the tongue, then it's too thick. Some people's coating may be yellow, indicating heat. White is still maybe in the earlier stages when the heat hasn't been created yet. These people will also usually have um, digestive disturbances. And the phlegm, when it reaches the collaterals and the meridians, where the energy flows, it will inhibit the proper flow of blood and chi, which is the energy in the body. When that is inhibited, then we don't see nourishment of the limbs and that is why the, the tremors come about. So we say that this obstruction in the blood vessels and the meridians is stagnation. This is another main point that we need to watch out for in patients. Whether it be deficiency or excess, if you don't have enough fluids in the body, that's another way if there's not enough water in the river to move the blood along, then it creates the idea of stagnation, things not moving slowly. And if you have an excess of something, too much stickiness clogging the meridians, that can also create stagnation, which would vary our treatment plans. Uh, another thing I'd like to point out is not everybody is clearly defined into different, specific different patterns. A lot of times they're they're combined together. Some patients come in with the classical yin deficiency and maybe they have already developed swelling in the lower limbs. So we have a, a water metabolism problem at the same time. Some people come in with the yang excess, the liver excess, but they also have the dampness and stagnation coupled at the same time. So we need to think and figure out the puzzle of what's going on inside by listening to their symptoms, looking at the patient's tongue, and feeling the patient's pulse. Then we can decide what kind of treatment plan we need. And today I brought some herbs to show you. Excuse me. I brought some herbs to show you about some of the functions that we would use to combat some of the symptoms and signs that we notice. The first one in the back here is called Shen Di Huang. This would be used in the cases of the yin deficiency for the liver and even possibly the yang excess if the heat has burned off some of the yin. This is a cooling herb. It cools the blood. It mo moisturizes the yin and it also helps to circulate the blood and get some of the stagnation out. Mai Dong is another cooling herb 
moisturizing the yin, cooling the heart, helping people sleep, and putting back some of the positive moisturizing quality, not the sticky, damp quality, into the body. For a lot of patients, we are going to use a combination of these two herbs. This is called Bai Sao, and this is called Gan Cao, which is actually licorice root. This simple formula of these two herbs in the, ancient in the ancient texts is commonly used for pain and any kind of cramping or shaking tremor symptoms. These two in combination are excellent. Bai Sao alone, its qualities are boosting the blood, nourishing the blood, and circulating the blood. And Gan Cao is used for cooling, detoxifying, and helping to stop pain. It's good for coughing. It's good for several things. And this is the raw form. When we look at these three, we're thinking more in terms of liver. So I keep talking about the idea of liver, the heat, the heat creating wind, which creates tremors. These herbs are going to help extinguish the wind, quell the wind. If we can quell the wind, then we can get rid of the tremors. The first one is a leaf called Sang Ye. It's cooling, it enters the liver, and it helps take out the heat in the liver. The next one is a vine with little curly Q hooks on it. It's called Go Ten, and it's cooling and specifically for quelling wind in the body, especially for the excess liver rising type of person. Uh, Gui Ban is a is an herb that's excellent for nourishing the kidney yin. At the same time, it can boost the blood, it can help you sleep, and it can quell the wind, extinguish the wind in the body. So if we boost the kidney essence, we're also boosting the liver blood. We're nourishing them both at the same time. Finally, we have a bamboo leaf. The bamboo leaf is called zuru, and we would add possibly zuru to a formula that had dampness, that needed to help with dampness. Zuru is cooling and helps with dampness. So this is excellent for people with a yellow tongue coating. These are some of the herbs that we would put in a formula. These herbs need to be boiled and you drink a tea. They also come in powder which you stir in water and drink. Herbs are usually put together in combinations of 10 to 15 different herbs and they are tailored specifically to your needs. I've also brought a guest with me today. Hello, this is Nathan Sun. He's a fellow acupuncturist here in Hawaii and he has been so kind to be our model for today. So we'll have him lie down here and we'll show you a couple acupuncture points that we may use for tremors and Parkinson's. We'll first just start off with a little alcohol to clean the points. And some of the points I've chosen for today will we'll go like this. I'll show you better. Tai Chong, Tai Shi, Zhu San Li, He Gu, and Bai Hui. Acupuncture needles are always disposable, as in used only once, never to be used again. We insert the needle in a little tube, find the point where we would like to insert. If this point is located between the big toe and the second toe, if you come up where the bones start to meet, right in this little valley. Tai Tong, this point is on the liver meridian. It is good for flushing out the excess liver heat and calming a person with irritability. If we match this point with Tai Chi, which is located right behind the tallest point of the ankle bone in this depression between the ankle and the Achilles tendon, we can boost the kidney yin and the kidney yang at the same time. We need to focus on nourishing the kidney yin because we are flushing out some of the heat. 
And when we put these two together, it won't be too drying. Zhu Sanli is on the stomach meridian. This point we are using to regulate the digestive system and boost the qi or energy in the body. If there is sufficient qi in the body, then the blood and the qi can flow very well. And there will be no stagnation or no tremors, hopefully. So we are using this point to help with the digestive system, keep it strong. If there is anybody with phlegm problems, that idea of dampness, we may come down here and do a point called phong long. But this can also help with the phlegm points. It's, it's good for keeping youthful. It's good for a lot of things. Uh, keeping the digestive system strong. The digestive system is what makes our energy after we're born. Parents pass energy on to us, sort of like the idea of genetics, into the kidney essence, which we've talked about. But after you're born, you are responsible for making your own chi, and you need it from your digestive system, so it's good to keep that strong. So we have Tai Tsung here in the top of the foot for flushing out the liver heat, Tai Shi for on the kidney meridian for boosting the kidney yin and kidney yang, and Zhu San Li for the digestive system chi. The point in the hand matches the point on the top of the foot. These four, we do, we do the needles on both sides. For today's purposes, I'm just doing one side. But these two are the left and the right hand, the left foot and the right foot together. Uh, these four points are very strong for regulating the flow of qi or energy in the body. As I said, if you regulate the flow of qi, then the stagnation is eliminated and the flow of blood and the circulation of the blood in the qi is, uh, is better and then the symptoms will hopefully, will hopefully calm down. This point is also good for boosting the qi, it's good for circulating blood, and it's good for expelling heat. So it's good to get heat out of the body. The last point we're going to show you today is right on the top of the head. This point is called Bai Hui. It's good for expelling the wind, calming the liver. It's good for sleep, so it's good for calming the spirit and the mind uh, and clearing the heat. So these are just an example, a small selection of points that we may use to treat on a person with tremors or Parkinson's disease. Now for those of you who have Parkinson's or tremors, may, may not be diagnosed yet, or loved ones who do, you can start today with some acupressure and try to help yourself or your loved ones. On the bottom of the foot, right behind the ball of the foot, there's a depression in the center. This point is called Yong Chen, and you can press on the bottom of the foot until you feel a nice sore feeling. It shouldn't feel, feel painful, but a nice sore feeling on each side, each foot. I won't touch the other one now, he has a needle here. This will help to expel the wind, which we don't want wind for the tremors, calm the liver, and nourish the kidneys, which are crucial for this disease. So this would be an excellent one to, to massage a few minutes each day. This one, Tai Tsung, which I explained, it's between the big toe and the second toe, coming up right before the bones meet in the little valley. In this depression, you can press in here. You should feel a nice sore feeling. Tai Chi is very easy to find between the tendon right here in the back of the ankle, Achilles tendon and the ankle bone, in between right behind the ankle. Zhu San Li, below the knee, outside in this ridge of muscle that runs right outside the tibia. You can press all along here. This is the stomach meridian, especially if you have dampness. He Gu on his hand is very simple. You just grab this big fleshy part of the hand between the thumb and the index finger. This is usually always get a sore feeling out of people. And Bai Hui, 
by way you can find by coming to the tip top of the ears and finding where those points meet on the top of the head and pressing in this point gently on the top of the head will also help with the symptoms. If you have any questions on what I've talked about today, you can feel free to call or email us. Our number and email will be at the end of the show or it's been playing at the bottom of the screen. Uh, I enjoyed sharing this information with you today and I hope that you return next time for our next show on a different symptom. Thank you so much for joining us and mahalo.